Dear Media original podcast. This episode could have been way worse for us girls, but it was pretty tame and pretty mellow because we got wild with these guys. So I was happy that none of that was on camera. What's up, everybody? Welcome in. We've got another episode of Back to the Beach with Kristen and Steven for you. We're going to Mammoth. Hello, everyone. I'm Steven Coletti. I'm Kristen Cavallari. There she is, of course. And it is episode seven of Laguna Beach, the Royal Orange County, season two. It is titled Get Over Him, but it should be titled <laughs> We're Going to Mammoth, Baby. And Kristen yeah, yeah. really fired up that we're going to Mammoth. Because you're wait. like, Mammoth, let's go. I know, I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it just MTV needing you to say that you're going to Mammoth or you actually are really excited to go to Mammoth? It's definitely a combination of the two. I enjoy, mm. so I actually was born in Colorado. I grew up in Colorado. So I am a mountain girl at heart. So I was very excited snow to bunny. go skiing. I'm a snow bunny, if you will. So I was very excited to go. Well, I think it's funny because they have us driving up. It's Alex and I, Talon, and then Talon's friend, Jeff. And I don't know if you remember this or not, Stephen, but when we would have car scenes, if we'd be driving somewhere, they would leave walkie talkies in our car so that they could, oh yeah, so they could tell us what to talk about. Yeah. So clearly they're like, hey, you know, can you guys talk about how excited you are to be going to Mammoth and blah, blah, blah. I think at this point now, I'm hoping you guys as the audience can kind of tell when we're taking the piss, if you will, out of a scene. And so we're all going, yeah, you guys, we're so excited to go to Mammoth. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can just tell it's such a sarcastic conversation about how excited we are. But I actually was excited. We should set this up for everyone. We had something called Ski Week, which wasn't very popular in California as far as other schools having them. It was the week after President's Day, whatever that was following in that February. week. We actually had something that was on our school calendar that said Ski Week. And basically... Everyone from Laguna, the whole town would kind of pick up and move to Mammoth for this week and go skiing, which was really, really fun. It was after President's Day weekend. There weren't a lot of people up there. So it was the middle of February and you did have some tourists from around the world. But for the most part, we was kind of like, I don't know, the majority of, of the people I think were in town as far as where they were coming from were coming from Laguna Beach. Like a couple thousand people, I feel like. Yeah. Everyone's families were going up there, all their kids. And it would be an absolute blast. It was, I mean, I still went for years, years afterwards as far as, you know, going up to Mammoth because Mammoth is, you know, great ski town, a lot of fun. But to have this ski week always felt like it was, it was like a special time for us to go up and that no other schools were going. And we, we got like our bonus spring break. Do you want to know what I just remembered? Do you remember those invasion trips that we went on where it was oh, yeah. a sponsored oh group that we would go? I think oh, we yeah. went to Jackson Hole one year and I were think those, it was a, you, were those I was over a sophomore. ski week. I was just going to say, I, they must have been, right? Or were they over winter break just after Christmas Oh, during no, New Year's? No, you're right. You're right. They were over New Year's. Yep. I was going to say, because it wasn't just our school that would go on these snowboarding yeah. trips. They got people from all over Southern California. Yes, and you're right. only a handful of school districts did the ski week thing, I think it was like a couple days after Christmas. And then the big party right. was always that New Year's night. You're right. Because we had a New Year's together on Invasion my sophomore year, junior year. Because yep. I remember coming home from that trip and my birthday is January 5th. I was turning 16 and my dad didn't let me get my license on my birthday. And that was like right when we got home from invasion. Why? Who knows? I was obviously in trouble like I always was. <laughs> but I I don't think I got my driver's license until March, like a couple months after my birthday. Yeah. Interesting. Anyways, total tangent, but... <laughs> Those snowboarding trips were fun though. Like if we did... Cabo for spring break. There were some parent chaperones, if you will, or if there was... I don't think uh, there were any parent chaperones. I think that they were like kids. Well, that's what I'm saying. So if we, when we had Cabo and we had Ski Week, there were people, there were parents from Laguna there. That snowboard trip that you're talking about, oh yeah, it'd be a lot of kids whose like parents were a little more casual, a little more flexible with their kids going somewhere. Yeah. Because you're talking about you're 15. I think your brother was on the trip as well. He was. That was the only reason my dad let so me go. That's how you could go. But yeah. I remember that trip being the first time I was basically doing something without my parents or any real chaperones where it was like, all right, this is going to be a good time. It's kind of going to be a party. And we're away from our parents for the first time. 
I yeah. remember that. And it got like living in hotel rooms together for like a week or whatever. I mean, the yeah, fact remember- that I could even go is like I was 15. Oh, like my brother's taking care of me. I mean, and it was always like, how could we sneak alcohol? Yep. And, and everyone was bringing, of course, alcohol on these, yep. on these buses. But as soon as our parents would drop us off, you got on the bus. And before that bus even hit the freeway, everyone's whipping out all their alcohol and yes. whatever shit that they're bringing with them. I and it's mean. just going down. And a party ensues on that bus. And I remember mm-hmm. we heard about this before. And it, sure enough, it happened to us. But on these buses, people would just get so wasted. We're driving to Jackson Hole, which, <laughs> you know, from Southern California is 15 hours. I don't know. Uh-huh. It's a long It's a long it's drive. It's overnight. You know, you're supposed to sleep. I don't think any of us actually did. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to sleep on the bus. Nope. You, what we do is we get on the bus and for those first like two to three hours, maybe maybe five when you're on the bus, like we're partying and people are like passed out. People are getting sick. People are throwing up on the bus. There's oh. one little bathroom that just became, oh you know, God. it was overflowing. It was disgusting. I don't think I actually Ooh. snowboarded once that whole trip. <laughs> It's funny. In this episode, I'm like, did you snowboard? You're I like, sure yeah. Did. I'm like, every day. I actually enjoyed it. Although they didn't show me being a very good snowboarder. I mean, I was definitely better than Alex and Jessica, but I was falling quite a bit. I remember being okay. Just want to throw that out there. We'll say this. Props to, and I must have tried it. I must have given you a snowboard lesson one trip and then was trying to encourage you to continue snowboard or something or not like- Because I skied growing up and I switched to snowboarding oh, yeah. in middle school. Yeah. I think I remember you talking about that, but you've got it down through the lesson. So we'll, we'll give you props there as we get into talking about our snowboard guys. Let's talk to our little mountain men that you guys meet. By the way, one of the guys' name is Forrest, which is a great, if you're going to Mammoth or you're going to the mountains <laughs> and you're going to get snowboarding lessons, I feel like if there's a guy named Forrest, definitely get a lesson <laughs> from him. He sounds like a cool guy. He's got a great name, but you guys- And so, Johnny. You, can't forget about Johnny, who I say is so hot. <laughs> <laughs> but to tee it up, as you're saying uh, in that moment in the car, you actually say like, they should go rent everything now. Like we need to handle this now. And so you guys do. You guys go to Wave Rave, the shop there in, in Mammoth. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it's still there. And you meet your little mountain men, your little Sasquatches. Which, by the way, later in this episode, Morgan says that we met Johnny the year prior. Mm-hmm. So you this is my that? buddy. Johnny's my buddy. No, I actually don't remember. But I do know, and they don't show this in the episode, those guys would come over at night and we would party with them and hang out all night. And I was going to ask you that. I can oh, see that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, this episode could have been way worse for us girls, but it was pretty tame and pretty mellow because we got wild with these guys. So I was happy that none of that was on camera. <laughs> That's awesome. I wonder why they would miss, I guess, because it wouldn't align with where their storylines were at that point when they've got... Or maybe we uh-huh. were like, you guys can't come over until we're done filming. I think we were smarter this go around, right? So we probably were Or yeah, were you could like, have just told them, yeah, don't like- uh-huh. you know, We're w- filming, we'll, we'll be done at nine, done. come over then, you know? <laughs> yeah, I could see you guys doing that. Did, yeah, now, for I sure. thought at the end of the episode, Morgan was saying how she had met some people that gave them lessons and then she told you to meet them. Is that it? Like, do you remember meeting those guys before? Vaguely. So oh, okay. I actually did Ski Week with Morgan and Alex the year before, which is what she's uh, saying. Okay. And she's saying we met Johnny at Wave Rave and that I guess I had told her that we were hanging out with him again. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So all he's right. my buddy. There you go. Well, shout out to those guys. They're giving you all snowboarding lessons today. They're obviously very good snowboarders in their own right. But yeah. you guys had a lot of fun with them. That must have been it was fun. I remember trip. it being such a fun trip. And a large part of it was these guys, you know, just having new guys when you're 18 years old. It's very exciting and very fun. <laughs> you didn't have anybody at this point. You were coming out single, of, of and, your, your college boyfriend relationship. And yeah, you were like, Steve and I are not getting back together. Last time you were kind of talking about what's going on with guys for you. You're complaining about winter formal that there was nobody there for you to kiss. <laughs> there you go. See, so I'm single. I'm very yeah. single. I also think too, Jessica breaking up with Jason off of the heels of that trying to just get her over him, as this Mm. is titled. Having these guys to, you know, have some fun with, I think was also really nice too. Um, Okay, so my condo, they keep referring to it as Kristen's condo. Not my condo. MTV Uh, paid for this house. I I literally had nothing to do with it. (laughs) But hey, I'll take the credit for sure. Why do they need to make it your condo? I mean, I I understand. Because Lauren had a condo. That's why. So they was like, oh, both the girls have a condo in Mammoth. Like, oh, the rivalry continues. I guarantee that's why. Got it. So they also tee up in this episode, the beginning and the previously on in your narration, you say that 
oh, well, talent's like, he's not dateable or we're, we don't have a thing. But then they go right back into it in this mm-hmm. episode where on the previously on, you're saying that, you know, even though you were, you're saying that you're not a thing, you were, you're saying that like, oh, talent and I were actually hooking up and Steven didn't know this. And it, he's like, they think that they needed that because, you know, they had the Taylor and the talent thing that was not going to happen. So then now they're trying to really- Yeah, I don't- I don't in, really like, get it. I, I really, because by the way, if Talon and I were actually like hanging out and hooking up, we're staying in a house together. Like they would have gotten something between the two of us other than us hitting each other with pillows. Like that was the extent <laughs> of it, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like over here hanging out with Johnny. So yes, this is such a forced storyline between mm. Talon and I, I think. It was a little bold of them to do like a 180 right away, even in their world, of which I we agree. know that they've been very bold, but they obviously used the previously on to really drill down down for the audience what they need to focus on and what the stories are. Yeah. And they kind of use that to sell their storyline. So in the previous episode to have them saying, you and Talon are not a thing. It's not going to happen. It can't. Like we tried. But then one episode later for it to come right back. But again, it's a little the, sloppy. Um, I agree. A little bit. A little yeah. bit in a way. But I agree. Anyways, we get up there. And then yeah, Lauren and her friend Caitlin that are there. This is so random to me that they're up there. I guess. I agree. This, it must have been for filming, right? I mean, I mean, I don't think that they would have gone up if it wasn't. Well, because for... they don't even ski. They said they didn't even leave the condo. <laughs> Except to go to the jacuzzi. <laughs> Which is really funny. They've just been working on their puzzle. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like, why come all. all the way here just to do a puzzle? <laughs> so it must have been for filming. I mean, it had to have been. It could have been. I'm also wondering if Lauren's got some younger siblings. And it could oh, have been right. something where they wanted her to take her younger siblings and she would. And so it kind of worked out and MTV wanted her to go because I don't know, I could see Lauren being like, I'm not going to Mammoth. There's no reason for me to go to Mammoth. Like, I'm just going to go up there and sit in a cabin. Like, this doesn't make sense, but I don't know. But they also, as we're going to talk about, they really need that scene with Talon and Lauren at lunch in Mammoth. I think once they knew Lauren was going to go to Mammoth, they're like, all right, let's get this moment with Talon at lunch with Lauren and we can use that to have him tell her that, you know, Stephen went to dinner uh, with Kristen the night before, which... Yeah. Yeah. Guys, as always, we are excited to talk to you about our good friends, HelloFresh. Did you know that you can make mealtime easy with delicious recipes made with fresh, wholesome ingredients delivered to your door? No lines, no hassle, just great tasting meals you can whip up and enjoy in the comfort of your own home. That's right, you guys. And March is National Nutrition Month. And HelloFresh makes it easy to choose delicious, dietitian approved meals. Simply look for the dietitian win tag on their menu choices for meals under 700 calories and with one third less sodium. With the cost of groceries going up and up, now is the perfect time to get started with HelloFresh. HelloFresh is cheaper than grocery shopping and 25% less expensive than takeout. Ooh, there you go. And HelloFresh has 40 weekly recipes to choose from for all meal occasions, lifestyles, and preferences. Take your pick from meals like soy glazed salmon with rice or mushroom and chive risotto. Guys, I had a little recipe this week. It is simple. It is easy. I don't know how many steak and potato people are out there, but I just recently had the sirloin steak and roasted garlic pan sauce. Yum. Mm. Comes with mashed potatoes and broccoli. Look, it's just some broccoli. It's some mashed potatoes and it's some steak, which seems very plain. Seems like we've all had it many, many times before if you're not a vegan. But there's so many different versions you can do of that. It's always nice to get that steak and potatoes and you're making it for yourself at home, courtesy of HelloFresh. I highly recommend you guys checking out that recipe. Yum. Okay, you guys, you're going to want to go to hellofresh.com slash beach60 and use code beach60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Again, that's hellofresh.com slash beach60 and use code beach60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Trust me, you guys, you're going to want to check out America's number one meal kit. Okay, you guys, really quickly, we are going to chat with you about ZocDoc. Stephen, what can you tell us about ZocDoc? Yeah, you know, there's there's nothing worse than actually going to a doctor's appointment and, you know, you're expecting to get the care and the attention that you deserve. And then you get that doctor that seems like they have better things to do or places to be, or it's just really crazy in their office and they're not giving you the attention that really you need. Uh, and instead of listening to you intently, and asking you how you feel and helping you along, the doctor is pretty much zoned out or looking at the clock. I've definitely experienced this before. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed 
take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Big pet peeve of mine. I hate when you're trying to go to a doctor's office or a dentist and you're trying to just be efficient, get in and get out, and you go in there and it is just kind of pandemonium. It's crazy. We, we hate those surprise twists. We may like them in our podcast, but we do not like them at our doctor's offices. With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient review doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. All right, you guys, you're going to want to go to ZocDoc.com slash beach and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash beach, ZocDoc.com slash beach. Anyways, before we get all the way up into Mammoth, there's the scene between Alex M., Casey, and Taylor in a jacuzzi. And this is where we find out for the first time that without any kind of conversation between Jason and Alex, that now Jason and Alex are in a relationship. And I'm yeah. wondering... That didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on point for, for MTV time. Next but morning. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering in real life, how long... Do you remember after the winter formal and the breakup that this is... I don't remember. Because I know that this jacuzzi scene, that while they're making it seem like you guys are their home while you guys are out on, on ski week... This isn't happening during no, ski week. No. This is just some, you know, much further down in in probably it's March, probably April, a pickup, honestly. Yeah, or maybe even in the summertime yeah. where they're they're having this after they've started to get together, and then MTV saw their storyline was going to play out for the season. But I'm kind of laughing because <laughs> I don't know if it's a foreshadow, but Alex is talking about Jason. To me, this makes more sense as a re- of a relationship. I feel like Alex could maybe put up with his shit a little more at this age. Like she'd be more willing to call him out. And they seem to have good chemistry, but the whole time we're having this conversation, it sounds like someone's taking a piss in the background or on another microphone. <laughs> There's some sort of filter in the jacuzzi, which they couldn't get the sound fixed on. So it's just like <laughs> the whole time about her talking like about her and Jason being a thing now, it sounds like someone's just taking a leak. <laughs> they like, were probably think- so bummed about that in the edit. You know what else doesn't make sense to me is if Jessica and Jason just broke up, I don't think she actually would have been calling him from Mammoth saying that she loves him. Like to me... He's with Alex. Like uh, none yeah. of it makes any sense to me. I think the the timing of it all is a little jumbled together. I don't know exactly how it was happened or how it was laid out, but it to me it do- it just doesn't add up at all. Thank you for bringing up that point. I, yeah, I was gonna bring that up as well. It seems like because there's that scene where <laughs> uh, this is really funny to me, where Alex <laughs> and Jessica come downstairs and. <laughs> Let me see if I want to make sure I get this quote right. Come on, Alex say. just throws her right under the bus. Jessica comes down and says, I just left a really long voicemail for Jason. And then Alex says, yeah, and she said she loved him. And then you're <laughs> just like, ah. Uh. By the way, you guys are all wearing white, which is really funny. There's these oh, little I didn't snow even buddies. notice that. So that's Everyone really funny. Everyone is dressed head to toe in, in white. In the mountains, you know? Like, clearly, this was a decision for you guys. <laughs> you know what I loved about this scene is, again, just making fun of the whole situation. I'm like, Alex, what are you drinking? And she's like, Juice. Like, no, she's not drinking <laughs> juice. She's boozing hard. We were boozing hard. <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> so the next morning, you guys are just... I don't even know why. Of course, this is why MTV's cameras were in the room. is because I was going to be calling. But you guys are just kind of hanging out in the room, throwing shit around. Literally, <laughs> just like waking though. up. And then the phone rings and Alex grabs it. And she's like, it's Steven. And you're like, what are the odds of that right now? Wait, but hold on. Because I actually either am a really good actress or my reaction was genuine. Was your end of the conversation in real time or was that a pickup? Do you remember? Those lines for me are a pickup of me having to go through each line. Like okay, I wasn't so really on the I phone. I wonder if you actually called me though. Like my, I guess my question is, did MTV say, hey, Steven, can you call Kristen right now and tell her that you're coming to Laguna? Oh, you're probably right. And then they right. got the other end of it later. Or did you actually call me and tell me you were coming to Laguna and I happened to have a camera in my face and then they got your side of it later? Like I know uh, I they weren't know, filming but... you when you actually called. Yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, you guys are like just getting up and... I thought my reaction seemed genuine, but I was maybe getting better at this stuff by now. But also what I thought was interesting yeah. was you were, I'm in Mammoth, right? It's what, a five-hour drive? You're like, are you going to be around tomorrow? And I'm like, yeah. Like, oh, I'm going home now? Like, what? I just got to Mammoth. Like, what? No, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, none of it makes sense. I'm here yeah. for a week. <laughs> and by the way, I, I don't know why I'm coming home every weekend. It's because you miss me. Okay, yeah. Now, yeah, now yeah, I, yeah, I think we're why. back on. <laughs> I'm, I'm marching on home. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man. Yeah. The idea too of me coming down for a day and then wanting to go just to take you out to lunch. It uh, makes sense to me, you know? I mean, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> this was all real life. <laughs> I'd love to know some more context with it. I also traveled quite a bit. So my mom is or was a flight attendant for American Airlines. So I could go on these passes where it was really easy for me to fly. So I didn't need a big budget to pay for flights when I was you know, a teenager. So basically got them for free. There'd be like, you know, the price of like a train ticket. And so when I was in college, I would utilize them and go down on certain weekends and, and visit friends in San Diego. I'd visit friends in Santa Barbara, even LA. And I just wonder if maybe at the tail end of one of those weekends, Mm. they found out or if they knew and if I was like oh yeah I'm gonna be down like ooh well maybe we'll have you take Kristen out to lunch which I okay. think is what they did okay. because like I mean we could say this right now unequivocally I did not leave school for a weekend to come down and just take you out to lunch like this is just like, That's fair. as much as we <laughs> strayed from the plan of like alright we're just gonna do our own thing and like yeah. clearly still have like those emotions that were there it was never like, hey, I want to come down this weekend. And like, let's just you and I hang out, right? It was like, all right, if yeah. you're in town, like if I had to come down or if I was going to be coming down for whatever, who knows what was going on? Yeah, yeah no, think, that's fair. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying yes. to think what else I would have, well, you, know, you know, whatever. I, I really would imagine because we were filming the show and MTV was obviously trying to get you on as much as possible. Anytime they caught wind of you potentially traveling or if you could, yeah. they were going to have you come down. Yeah. So that makes sense to me. Let's jump into Jason and Alex's date because their little conversation is quick. I think it's a good moment for me because you have Jason saying that he's starting pitching the next day and Alex is genuinely excited. <laughs> she, <laughs> she's like, I want to come, which is funny. And Jason's like, do? And she's like, I love baseball, but she just... <laughs> Clearly loves Jason so much and she really does like him that she'll do anything to kind of hang out with him. But I thought that, that was a really sweet, sincere moment. But also, I see her trying to get Jason to, I think, open up in a, in a good way mm -hmm, on camera. Mm -hmm. She yeah. has that line where she's talking about what he's wearing and complimenting him. She's just trying to get him to loosen up a little bit on camera. Yeah, which I think was good for him because obviously he was uptight and uncomfortable, I think, a lot with the situation and just didn't want to be involved, but found himself involved a lot more than I think he expected. So, <laughs> so what's your takeaway from their first date? Do you feel like Jason is better with Alex than he was with Jessica? Do you feel like Jason is just a little uptight on camera? What are your I, thoughts? I think he's a little uptight on camera, but him and Alex, they make a good pair. I agree. So, I think it's way more comfortable. She's a, more confident, I think, to be able to handle Jason. Yeah. You can really put, yeah, a, a lot next to what, you know, Jason and Jessica had and say, all right, this one's going to be a lot better than that. Because unfortunately, as we've said multiple times, and I think that they probably will admit to when we speak to them, yeah, they, you know, should have maybe never taken it to that relationship level together. They just weren't destined to be together. So, mm -hmm. bummer for them. Great for MTV. There you go. Right on time. Um, also, so they go to Salt Creek Grill, which I was a hostess at for almost a year. And when I would be grounded, <laughs> I would tell my dad that I was working. And then I guess I would park my car there and you would come and pick me up and we would go do our thing. But one time my dad got smarter and would call the restaurant and then he would find out that I wasn't actually working and I Busted. would get in more trouble. Yep. <laughs> so lots of memories at old Salt Creek Grill. <laughs> we, we got quite busty. I remember in the parking lot there after he, yeah, he was hitting you up and you were like, oh, fuck. My dad uh -huh. knows I'm not working tonight. And I remember you called him and then you were like, I was just on a break. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. He already knows. <laughs> you are not talking yourself out of this one. I'm like, you have to just give in. This is over. The jig is up. What does he want uh, you to do? I will take you there. And he was waiting for you at Salt Creek Grill. Yeah. And I don't know where, I think we were at my house or something. So then we, I drove you down there, the parking lot. And I was so scared. I was like, oh no, he's going to kick my ass. God, ripped me out like of the car. My whole high school world was just being like, oh no, my dad's going to be mad at me. <laughs> I think in this situation, I was a little surprised because he was so mad. He just wanted to take you home that he actually didn't really say anything to me. We pulled up and he opened up the car door and was like, get out, let's go. <laughs> and then you're like, oh shit. And you got your little purse, and you got out. And then he just slammed my door. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was like, uh, and then I just Bye. sat there for a second and then you guys <laughs> motored off and I was just like, God, I was always oh, in I trouble. I wonder if I'm ever going to see her ever again. I know. <laughs> That's when I was like, let's run away. <laughs> Honestly, I think it was around that time. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, there was a time where it's just at home where the butting of heads between a dad who's trying to look after his daughter and a daughter who really is just wanting to have her fun. She's boy crazy. She's just out there trying to have a good time at this point in her life. And you guys butted heads quite a lot. So you were ready to get out there. And yeah, it was like, 
I think you also didn't, you know, have a great relationship with your stepmom at the time. So you were no. just, you were fucking over being home. And I never wanted to be home. And I've always found myself grounded being home. <laughs> so we almost moved to Florida. Yeah, just we you were going to move to Florida. Because <laughs> we couldn't drive the freaking Azuzio across the country. A piece of shit would break down. Mm-hmm. I know we told the story of us potentially running away together. But do you remember, and I know this because I have so many pictures from this trip and I was a brunette, like a full-on brunette. We went to Palm Springs. It was you, me, Dieter, and Jonathan, maybe? Your friend Jonathan? Or... Jonathan, no, or who's maybe in the first season, he's tr- one of my golfing buddies. Ray, I'd have to go back and look at these photos, but I thought we just went you and I one time. I guess we just drove back together, so that's what I'm thinking of. Because I, yeah. I have a really funny memory from that. You do? Well, what is it? But I, but I want to say full circle. I feel like I was also grounded when we went there, and I don't know how the hell I like got out, or like, or maybe I just oh, lied yeah. to my dad. Yeah, no, you right? we were staying the night out there, and so you yeah. had to lie about spending the night at someone's house. So okay. I don't think you were grounded. It was more of the lie of. You're I staying the night at Alex's house. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But Wait, I what's thought your story? we went out there just you and I, but maybe we did. Maybe go, there maybe, was a couple trips. Yeah, but maybe you're right because what, all that I remember from that trip is when we were driving home, and I remember that it was, I think the AC broke in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> it was so hot <laughs> that like I think I was shirtless and you were just wearing your oh, bra. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's right. And I remember it was super windy and it was stressing out that my car was going to break down in the middle of the desert out there because, you know, again, no AC, the car yeah. was acting up. It was really just overheating. It was so pissed off to be in those elements. <laughs> but you've got us shirtless in my car driving down the freeway. Yes. And I, I had to keep it at a, like, I had to keep it at like 55 or 60. I, well, cause I couldn't go that fast. So trucks were driving past <laughs> us. Yeah. And I remember like one of the trucks like honked his horn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I remember that. <laughs> That's really funny. But we did uh-huh. make it home. She's we good. did. Thank God. So I don't know if my dad ever found out I was in Palm Springs. I think maybe that's like, the one time I got away with something. <laughs> mm. Anyways. <sighs> Anyways, back to snowboarding. <laughs> all right. Back up to the mountains. Here we are. You guys are all freezing. And and uh, there is a, a funny moment on the slopes where they try to set up a little situation with... Jessica and one of the snowboarders. Yeah. Potentially. I mean, yeah, I think they were obviously, I'm sure, pulling for it, you know? Well, give us a little bit of the behind the scenes here. When you guys hung out with them at night, yeah. did, so was Jessica, was she yes. with Jason at the time? Okay, so she oh, didn't I don't, hook no, up no, with no, one sorry. of the guys. I don't, well, I don't remember if her and Jason were together. I do remember her hooking up with one of the snowboarders though, which is maybe not my place to say. What I about, probably well, did also. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> probably some kissy face jacuzzi time. There I'm was sure. Some, there was some um, hand holding. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Just super innocent. <laughs> what, what if about, anything, I made out with Johnny, but I feel like that's probably the extent of it. What about my girl, Alex H? You do, know, we, do we think she scored with the, what was the other guy's name? Forrest had, or Forrest? Phil? I can't remember which one was Phil? which. I'm potentially. Sorry, Kyle? No, we, de- we definitely we definitely had a Johnny and a Forrest. I want to say uh, it was Phil, but it could be wrong. He's obviously super impactful. Made a real good impression on us. You know what, Phil, <laughs> if you're out there or Kyle, whatever your name is, you were an incredible snowboarder. And, we loved and great you. to the girls. So yeah, c- And great to, to the girls. Yeah, I mean, maybe Jessica felt really guilty about hooking up with a snowboarder and because she was with Jason. Like vaguely in my mind, maybe we ask her about it, see if she wants to talk about it. Mm. We'll get to the bottom of it. But I don't think it was so much MTV being like, let's get you girls with the guys. Like, I think we were doing that on our own. Yeah, it's, it seems sincere. <laughs> like, there was a good dynamic there. I think that, like, when you guys are in the shop, and obviously, because Talon's, and I think he was jealous leaving that <laughs> shop of like, damn, like, these girls like these guys. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now? Like, I'm the odd man out. Giving him a hard time. I mean, Talon, yeah. you jealous? Like, yeah. <laughs> He's oh all quiet. God. He's all quiet through that scene. We've never heard Talon be so quiet. Right? And he is at the Wave Rave. (laughs) He's he's outnumbered there, poor guy. Oh. But, you know, the next day on the mountain, I think that that stuff's a lot of fun. You're just flying down the mountain there. Like you're moving and grooving. Like, well, they showed me falling quite a bit, but I got down the mountain for sure. I was laughing so hard when Jessica 
took her board off and was walking <laughs> down the mountain. I've never seen anything quite like that. <laughs> By the way, is this before or after that she stops in the middle of the slopes, which is dangerous in itself. If people are, you know, flying by and she needs to check her phone to see if Jason I called her back. No. And then you shimmy your way up the mountain to slap the phone out of her hand, <laughs> which well played. And she's complaining that she can't wear makeup and that her instructor's like, oh no, poor girl <laughs> just on her phone. I mean, just, oh, uh, I was laughing so hard. That's good stuff. Very well, cute. I think we should get into now what's going on at lunch here with, we're like, wait, why is Lauren and Caitlin up here? And they're just sitting in the cabin. Again, I do believe that she might've been up there chaperoning her younger siblings for her parents, as well as like MTV needed her to go. So she made it work and she's like, fuck it, I'll go up there and hang out. Now they set up this lunch where they have Talon come in and spill the beans on this. It's an interesting moment because I think that you have a sincere reaction from Lauren here. And I'm trying to see like when the way Talon's eating and what he's eating at certain times to see how yeah. different in the conversation it is. But look, at the end of the day, it is like Lauren's finding out that like when I was down, I went to dinner with Kristen. I don't know. It's a tough look, but I could tell that's... I'm not sure which weekend they're talking about. I think that this is the <laughs> Valentine's Day weekend. I know they're having him talk about that. Well, they are that, around but, the same time because Ski Week is in February, you know, yeah. so... But the fact that I then also... We've got that phone conversation where even though we didn't talk at, the, at that time, we knew that we were going to see each other within the next couple of days because yeah. MTV, you know, has us talk and say, oh, you know, we'll, we'll go to lunch or whatever. So uh, it's it's a weird timing deal, but I could <laughs> see, I could tell by the end of it that there was some sort of pressing of what was happening at this time. And there's still some kind of edit cuts. I know Lauren gets a sincere reaction of like, oh shit, like he, he had dinner with Kristen. Which I think would make news at the time because you and I had obviously yeah. been broken up. Yeah. Which is, it's more of a gossip thing. But I could tell because Talon says at the end of it, he backs me up in a way. He says, Stephen's a good guy. And yeah. it's a sincere comment that I know he's saying on there because I'm sure as MTV was feeding him to talk about like, oh, he was, which Talon would never have this conversation with Lauren never be in the situation if it wasn't right. for the cameras, you know, but I wish we actually had talent on after this because I would ask him specifically about that and what he remembers from how that was filmed. But I don't know. You know what I like about talent? He never talks badly about anybody. Like he really is always pretty nice about everyone and has everyone's backs, which I appreciate because I didn't do that. <laughs> so I, I think it's really nice to have someone at that age always say something positive about someone. Even if he's going to drop a bomb or like say something, he like, circles it back to always having it be in a positive light, which I think is a really great thing. I respect the hell out of that. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. And Talon and I weren't even, I mean, we weren't even close back then. Yeah. And I, we kind of talked about this when we had him on, but we were frenemies in a way. What do you consider? I mean, we weren't, we well, weren't good friends, but we, yeah, we shared. I think maybe you know, I didn't help the situation between the two of you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he dated Lauren. He I think he did you. too, yeah. And he so, dated like, everybody had... apparently in Laguna Beach, according to the, the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess natural rivals in a way, but we just never hung out. So I give him credit here for he's somebody who is probably being put in a position, you know, could talk some shit. He doesn't. He just lays it out, which is the facts that, you know, you and I did go out to dinner and it was the day before I saw her. So anyways... All right, friends, I'm going to take another second to tell you more about Orange Theory. You've heard us talk about it before on this podcast. We are big proponents of Orange Theory over here. We've been checking out their classes and are highly recommending you do so as well. Orange Theory is the smarter workout for more results. It's a total body one hour group workout that combines science, coaching, and technology to guarantee maximum results from the inside out. It's a five-zone heart rate-based workout designed to transform you from the inside out and supercharge your metabolism for more caloric afterburn, more energy, more confidence, and of course, more results. Guys, 12 to 20 minutes in that orange zone three to four times a week is all you need to start your fitness journey towards a longer, more vibrant life. I've been hitting those studios, guys. I've been taking my Orange Theory classes. Uh, I'm just a big fan of what they have to offer over there. The coaches are solid. Everyone's friendly. It's a nice group work setting. And you get in and get out. It's, it's 60 minutes. They hook you up to those monitors. And you're doing your little circuit workout. You hit the treadmill for a little bit at your own pace. You hit the rowing machine for a little bit at your own pace with a nice little nudge from the coach, of course. And then you're also doing some stuff with some weights. So it's a balanced workout, an efficient time. And I can't say enough about what Orange Theory has to offer. Also, you can get your first class free. Visit orangetheory.com to find a studio near you and book it now. Also, 
love it, or your money back. Ask about their 30-day risk-free guarantee. They know you're going to love your Orange Theory experience, so they guarantee it. Just take 12 classes during your first 30 days, and if you don't feel like you're living a more vibrant, happier, healthier life, take back all your money and walk away. All right, you guys, it's that day again. It's hair wash day. But let's be honest, you don't just have the time or the desire to do it. I know that I like to go as long as humanly possible. Typically for me, that's like three to four days. If I'm not doing anything that week, I can totally stretch to four days. So when I just need a few more days out of my hair, I use Living Proof Dry Shampoo. It actually cleans your hair just without the water. I'm serious. So it looks like it's wash day each time. With Living Proof, you have two options to choose from when it comes to dry shampoo. The original dry shampoo formula that leaves a bit of texture and hold to your hair, or go with their advanced clean dry shampoo that works like a shampoo and a leave-in conditioner together. So your hair is soft, shiny, and smooth. Both take care of your scalp and leave no white residue behind. The trick is to apply to your roots. Make sure you wait 30 seconds and shake it out for that fresh blowout, clean hair feeling for days. I have both dry shampoos, but I feel like I lean towards the advanced clean dry shampoo a little bit more just because, again, I mean, it leaves your hair so shiny and smooth, and I absolutely love it. Not sure what products your hair really needs? Instead of guessing, I start by taking Living Proof's AI online healthcare quiz, which analyzes my specific hair care needs and styling goals, then uses that first-to-market tech to help customize the right hair care routine for me. So you guys visit livingproof.com slash beach and use code beach10 to get a free travel size dry shampoo with your purchase of $45 or more. That's livingproof.com slash beach. Use code beach10 to get a free travel size dry shampoo with your purchase of $45 or more. Livingproof.com slash beach, code beach10. Let's wrap it up with the... uh little lunch that we have um, at the the end of this episode. We're teeing up you coming up to San Francisco. So yeah, there's no way I I come down just to have a lunch with you. I don't know what I was around for or whatnot. And it wasn't just the weekend after Valentine's Day, you know, of like, oh, maybe something's going on. Because you and I, like, it wasn't, that wasn't the situation. It wasn't like, oh, we're going, we're hanging out for Valentine's Day. Like, I wonder if we're still hanging out right? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think it was really kind of what you see on the show is when we would see each other, there were obviously still feelings there, but we weren't trying to keep it going. It was really because of MTV. I kind of get fucked here because what they're doing is drag, they're dragging me into, oh, he's kind of stuck in his old ways. As you're narrating the show, they want to get to a point where you just crush me (laughs) and just like step all over my heart and leave me. And so that's what they're teeing up now from the Valentine's Day to, oh, he's back in town having a little lunch. Well, and obviously, because I do know me going up to San Francisco was for MTV. You know, I I don't think I would have done that. You wouldn't have visited me otherwise either. No, Yeah. yeah. And so, and they're clearly setting it up here. But in the same breath, I do enjoy watching us together. I mean, we do have chemistry and I think that it is sweet when they just show us having a real conversation Mm -hmm. and just being able to be ourselves without trying to just create all this drama between the two of us. I mean, you can tell there was obviously something there, which I think from that perspective, it's been fun for me to be able to watch that this season. Yeah, there's the rapport. There's those moments where if we can, we kind of take the piss out of each other a little bit in a way. It's Mm -hmm. it's fun. And I, I, I like when those moments happen, but it is rare because there's also times where they've used that against us. And yeah, these, these oh, moments sure. were like, you know, you could be making fun of me or vice versa. And then they use it almost of like, these two are kind of like rude to each other. And mm-hmm. like, look, these two should not be together because, you know, from the first season to now, in MTV world, we should have never been together, right? Mm-hmm, and it's like, mm-hmm. they're, they push the whole like, oh, Steven should be with this girl, Lauren. And so when they're leaning on that and showing that for the audience... You don't get a lot of those moments, but we, you know, had a lot of history. Um, yeah, I liked the scene. I thought it was sweet. I'm ready to take out my damn extensions, though. I tell you what, those <laughs> things need to go. <laughs> it, you know, it's, they've been an interesting timeline marker for me because I'm like, yeah. wait, all right, was this before winter formal? And I'm like, nope. Kristen's got long hair. Everyone's got their extensions in. I was like, these. This is actually after winter formal. So, well, there was um, a scene. I believe it was last episode where in the beginning of the episode, my hair is short, but it's in a ponytail. But then the rest of the episode, my hair is long. (laughs) So yeah, that was obviously a pickup scene. But for the most part, I don't remember how long I had them in. I guess we'll find out here pretty soon. But they couldn't mesh with the scenes 
too much because of the extensions. Mm -hmm. And I actually remember at the time being like, ha ha, now you can't fuck with me, even though they still managed to a little bit. But that's nice for me to see at least the hair is a dead giveaway. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, yeah. Should we get into a little segments here? Okay. What'd you go for personal rating? Personal rating, I'm going D, even though I'm not in this episode too much. I'm not looking forward to where I know this is going. They're like, all right, Steven is making the dumb decision of still Mm. interacting with this girl. Mm -hmm. We're going to crush him for it, right? So you know it's coming up in San Francisco, right? (laughs) Because I do know, yeah, we're we're going to San Francisco next. And Uh, and the way that that all goes down is is unfortunate for me. So Uh, I'm going to D. I wasn't in it that much. So it's, you know, and it's kind of harmless in this episode, except for that scene, of course, with Talon and Lauren at lunch. So I went with a B plus again because they're not being too too harsh to me. They're still showing my kind of fun, playful side and our real dynamic. So I like all of that. You're out there living your best life, I feel like. I really you see, am. You see that in this episode. <laughs> like you're just, you're coasting through senior year. You're having your fun. Yeah. You're not tied down to anybody. And... I mean, when you contrast that with what's going on with Jessica, <laughs> which is really <laughs> happening in your guys' lives, when you're together, these conversations are real. You're just like, fuck. Like, you're almost like, you know, you've got a high from being like, I'm so glad I'm not in one of those situations That's right now. That's so I, true. I don't have to deal with that. I'm just having fun, you know? Yeah, it's very true. And, I've come and a long got, way. <laughs> yeah, and you thrive in those times. I'm sure, you know, as you've, you know, you were married for many years and you've been, you know, single now for two well, years. Well, I've dated, but I've, I'd say I've been single. Yeah. And you've mentioned to me, you were like, I've really enjoyed this time because, yeah. you know, you were obviously in a relationship for a long time and yeah. a little bit of your, your freedom. Back, it's nice. I, I thrive in my freedom and my independence, I will say. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't even know if freedom is necessarily the right word because it's not like you were, you know, it's like you're like locked down or anything. But yeah, I think the independence of being able to make some decisions just for yourself after you, know, yeah. you spent the last you know, a decade in a relationship dedicated to that. And of course, to your kids, when you become single, you have a little more of an opportunity to spend some time for yourself, which... Exactly. Yeah. It's been nice to kind of reconnect with myself again and figure out who I am now because I am mm-hmm. a different person. So yeah, it's it's all good stuff. Thriving. For sure. Thriving. We'd, we'd love to hear it. So what was your audience rating for this one? I gave it a B. You know, a lot going on. I thought it was a fun episode. And, you know, lay in the groundwork for you and I, also Alex and Jason. So just, you know, steady, good fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm going B+. Plus. I, I've got a okay. fun episode in Mammoth. I, I think there's the change of scenery is always good. They really had a fun storyline between the local boarding guys and you guys. All of those interactions are, are genuine and fun. And they did a good job of cutting that all together. And between Alex and Jason, we've wrapped up the, for, for the most part, They've gone through the Jessica and Jason relationship. I'm sure that's still going to show itself for many more episodes, but they're now transitioning. And I think that there's people that's, you know, like you are just tired of telling Jessica, you can't be with them anymore. I'm sure the audience at this point, there's a lot of people being like, please get away from this guy. So I agree. Solid B plus. Okay. I love it. Well, I don't have a redo again. And I also didn't last (laughs) week. However... I know I have some major ones coming up. So I'm just going to coast right now. I'm going to take this. I'm happy with the whole episode. <laughs> okay. You've been a great friend. You were a great friend to Jessica in the last episode. And yeah. you're still, you're being nice to me. You're, you're taking yeah. the phone call, yeah. offering to Look go out to lunch. <laughs> but you're like, kind of like, ah, I don't want to lead him on, but sure, you'll hang out. And yeah, I mean, it's, look it's, at me. <laughs> <laughs> you're thriving. So yeah, a couple more episodes. I'm not going to be able to say that. Don't worry. I'm oh, not going to get too comfortable here. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't even know what happened. So I'm intrigued. No. But hey, you do you. You know? I, I, yeah, well, you I do apparently you. always have. <laughs> so what about my, you? My do-over is I, you know, I wish I could have been in Mammoth to help finish that puzzle with Lauren. That would have been <laughs> riveting television. I, I want to know so. if they ever ended up finishing that puzzle, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I actually do love a good puzzle. If it's I do like, too. They're I therapeutic. don't underestimate a puzzle. Yeah, yes, they are. They, they are. are. I love them. I love and you them. don't need to. It's not something that you do need to finish. And when I, I like Lauren says in this episode, she's like, "The puzzle is driving me crazy. I need to finish the thing." I could totally relate to that. But you don't need to me do too. it. You know, in a night, you could have like a puzzle sitting out on a table, hanging out for you know a little while, and you just kind of tend to it when you need to. I love a puzzle. I hear you. Okay, quote. I went with Alex Merle when she is on her date with Jason and she's just trying to get him to laugh. And she's sitting there going, I like your shirt. I like your this. I like your that. And then she goes, I like your face. (laughs) (laughs) I thought it was cute. (laughs) Yeah, I like that moment. I think Alex is 
good for Jason in that sense, especially when yes. he's on camera yes. and dealing with that. So that's good. I have, you alluded to it a little bit, but I think we should break it down because there's some good lines in there. Okay. There's a little walk and talk between Jessica and our forest snowboarding guy. And oh. Jessica, after, you know, she's already been trying to get the phone call from Jason, doesn't see it. And then she's now walking down the mountain. By yeah. the way, she gets somewhere and you're like, are you fucking walking down the mountain? I know, <laughs> like, I know. <laughs> you take the piss out of her often and it's really funny. Uh, she puts up with it pretty well. Oh, by the way, I, it's Pete. We, we called Pete. him. We, I, oh, I just I looked at my notes. Phil. Okay, yeah. I was close. Sorry, Pete, if you're Pete, out there, we love if you're listening you. to this. You, again, great dudes. Props to you guys. Hell of snowboarders, man. Where can, is Johnny now? Johnny, hit me up in the DMs. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, when do you, after, or do, you know, <laughs> after this, <laughs> have you <laughs> any connection to Johnny after the show aired? You want to know what's wild to me? My very first boyfriend in eighth grade in Chicago, his name was Johnny. So when I say the name Johnny, it makes me think of him. So I don't mm. know that I could ever go for another Johnny, to be honest. I remember that. So that name's Johnny. kind of a, that's kind of a traumatic. Like I have okay, one Johnny a, in my life. I can't have another. <laughs> anyway, so it's it's Jessica and Forrest. They're having a little walk and talk. And then she's just like, ah, she's all flustered. She's like, I'm the most uncoordinated person. I have a runny nose and I yeah. can't wear makeup. <laughs> yeah. Forrest is like, oh, that's a bummer. You can't wear makeup. I know. That really ruins my day. <laughs> Jessica's like, it should. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. I was laughing at that scene. That was really good. I loved this episode. I, You know, I'm not sure why MTV is being so kind, but they've been showing us having fun and real conversations. And for that, I am grateful. There you go. Well, you guys did great in this one. It's it's a fun episode. It's cool to see Mammoth. And yeah, bringing back the memories that we had up there on our little ski week. We got a full week off in February to go up and hit the slopes with everyone. I mean, that was legit. School. Like that it was a fun is, time. That is nice. Yeah. <laughs> a week off in February. Excuse me. <laughs> so great. <laughs> Good times there in the LBC. Well, <laughs> all right. Next week, I'm definitely not looking forward to what is probably, I don't know if it's in the next episode, but I'm, I think San Francisco trip is coming up. It's and coming again, up for sure. There's some bad moments. I am I feel like we should just end the podcast now. And the second half of the season does not get pretty for me. I have some real fuck ups. <laughs> oh boy. Well, I'm nervous. <laughs> I think I'm on borrowed time. I think mm. once we've, we've gone like through our like, oh, let's see if we're going to make something work yeah. through college. And no, it's not going to work in MTV's story. Then yeah. what are they going to do with me? You know, that's interesting. After San Francisco, I don't remember how you get weaved in or not, but uh, there's no way you're going to be on some episodes. There's just no way they were going to let you go like that, that easily. You know what, guys? I'm fine if this is it. If this is a wrap. No, we need you. Know you. We need you. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> we've well, we're been gonna find a out. lot, okay? We, I know. This is, this is enough reality TV for a person for Oof, 10 forever, lifetimes. Forever. That's what I, I usually say, which I give you credit because I... I think I should change this answer because there are some fun different shows out there that I would do. But when people ask me, like, would you ever do a reality show again? I'm like, what? No. Are you, are you kidding me? Like, I, I I've, already, I've done it. But there are so many different things you can do, whether it's, I mean, you could be on a game show or a travel yeah. show or something like Treehouse Masters, which is like one of the few reality shows that I have watched over the years <laughs> that I really enjoy, where I was like, I would fucking make a treehouse. That would be awesome. You should be on um, that one. Anyways, I we'll see what happens. I also say I'll but. never do another reality show, but I've done three, so who knows? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Can't rule it out. We appreciate you guys listening along on this little journey with us. We've we've had a lot of fun and we've got yeah. still a little ways to go. So yeah, continue to hang out and go on this ride with us. We'll We'll talk to you guys next week. Yeah, thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. We will see you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Back to the Beach with me, Kristen Cavallari, and the best ex-boyfriend ever, Stephen Coletti. We are so stoked to bring you along on this journey back to Laguna Beach with us. You can find us on Instagram at at Dear Media Studio, hashtag BTTBpod, at Kristen Cavallari, and at Stephen Coletti. Got any questions about the show? Give us a call on our Back to the Beach hotline, 1-844-LAGUNA-0. And if you like our show, please make sure you follow or subscribe wherever you're listening to this so you don't miss an episode. And don't forget to leave us a rating and a review. Back to the Beach is a Dear Media production hosted by Kristen Cavallari and Stephen Clint. Our show is produced by Rosalie Atkinson. Post-production by Amanda Vandekar, Michelle Harrison, and Taylor O'Connor. Music supervision by Jonathan Lane. Our theme song is Come Clean, written by John Shanks and Cara Diaguardi. Cover composed by Steve Shebby. And our executive producers are Jocelyn Falk, Paige Port, and Michael Bostick. 